Speculative evolution is a genre of speculative fiction that hypothesizes fictional organisms and their origins. It is often used in science fiction to explore the biology of distant planets, postulate the future of our planet's flora and fauna, and to hypothesize how Earth's own history might have been different had certain context-altering events not occurred. These latter settings are usually built around a core concept, so that is, what would our world look like today if the meteor had not triggered the end Cretaceous extinction event, or if humans had not developed agriculture? The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, published in 1895, is often cited as the earliest example of speculative biology, with the future of our planet being eventually dominated by large crustaceans and insects. There are earlier works that may be examples of speculative life forms, such as the botanical illustrations found in the Voynich manuscript depicting seemingly fictional plants laid out in a manner consistent with herbals of the time, circa 1420 CE, although it must be mentioned that the text itself is dubious, much less its inclusion in speculative biology. Notable examples of speculative evolution in popular culture include the wildlife of Skull Island and Peter Jackson's King Kong, Edgar Rice Burroughs' Martians, dragons in Anne McCaffrey's Pert novels, and the inhabitants of Pandora in James Cameron's Avatar. After Man by Dougal Dixon is in many ways the founding work of modern speculative biology. In this book, Dixon postulates how life might adapt to a post-human world. Convergent evolution is central to his proposed organisms. Convergent evolution is a natural phenomenon by which different animals are faced with similar contexts will often develop similar anatomical features. A famous example of this is the body plan that vertebrates consistently evolve when adapting from a terrestrial lifestyle to an aquatic environment. Several clades of reptiles and mammals have all evolved from dramatically different ancestors to a fish-like body plan. A fluked tail, stabilizing pectoral fins, and a smooth body are all attributes independently evolved by these distinct groups. When faced with the same pressures, organisms will often naturally select the same solution. In Dixon's book, birds evolve into a massive filter feeder similar to whales, rabbits produce an animal similar to today's deer, and bats evolve into a panther-like apex predator. Dixon also wrote Man After Man, which explores the ways humans might adapt to different settings, and The New Dinosaurs, which postulates how non-avian dinosaurs may have evolved into modern times had they not gone extinct 66 million years ago. The setting of my literary work, Chimere, is a speculative biology project built around this prompt. Endemic life of a distant planet opens a portal to Earth, and uses our flora and fauna to terraform their own world. Every few million years this portal opens and takes new organisms. How might these organisms survive in this new context? Which organisms thrive as they are? What adapts to a new niche? And which organisms are unable to adapt and go extinct? This gave me a lot of room to play with in terms of determining which organisms I could speculate on. The most notable difference between Chimere and Earth is that, since Chimere did not have the famous End Cretaceous Extinction event, non-avian dinosaurs remain numerous and diverse. Chimere has undergone its own climate changes and suffered several mass extinctions, so these dinosaurs are quite different from those in our fossil record, and many clades were successful on Earth, are endangered or extinct on Chimere, while many of those in the shadows have risen to dominance. In the known world, the setting of my short story anthology and novel I'm working on, the recent migrants often come with the same advantages that many invasive species do. For this reason, about half of the animals encountered are either modern species or close enough that we might recognize them. In addition to the influence of recent migrants, there is also a great faunal interchange resulting from three long-isolated continents converging. This all culminates in a highly competitive and diverse playground for me to create a lot of strange creatures while still grounding the setting for new readers with familiar animals such as horses, tigers, and crocodiles. As in Dixon's work, convergent evolution is key to many of my designs. When creating the Mogao, an aquatic dicynodont, I look to animals like walruses and manatees that fill similar niches for inspiration on its design. There are two clades of arboreal, that is, tree-dwelling, pterosaurs in Chimere, with one group evolving adaptations similar to primates like apes, and the other more resembling the likes of sugar gliders and flying squirrels. As I designed the cursorial horned dinosaurs, I looked to ungulates, as well as porcupines and hedgehogs, to speculate how the ornamental filaments of related species may have been adapted into a defensive feature. 
Although the Megaraptorans that fill the role of top predators in the known world are not close relatives of T-Rex, Giganotosaurus, and Torvosaurus, their body plan is similar to those real fossil taxa, as many different theropod lineages with strikingly different ancestors produced similar proportioned animals once they evolved into 40-foot apex predators. I reasoned that if it happened to Tyrannosaurs, Carnosaurs, and Megalosaurs, why not Megaraptorans? The known world has been the focus of my development as it is the setting of my literary work, but the regions beyond are where I get to truly flex my creativity. What might 400 million years of isolation produce, given the truly confounding and fascinating directions flora and fauna have taken on Earth? The possibilities are damn near endless. I can't wait to explore these wild frontiers of opportunity. I hope you've all been enjoying this channel. Let me know in the comments if there's a video topic you'd really like to hear me talk about. I have about a dozen videos lined up, and as I continue to bulk my portfolio with relevant artwork, I want to be sure that I'm working towards the topics that are of special interest to you. Also, if there's something in the way that I'm putting the video together that you really like, or doesn't work for you, that feedback is most welcome. I truly have no idea what I'm doing. Also, if you like fantasy stories and are interested in Chimere, please consider calling up your local bookstore and ask them to have Tales of Chimere shipped in. Ask for ISBN 978-108-792-7442. There are 11 independent and inclusive short stories in the anthology, filled with dinosaurs, demons, and magic. They can all be enjoyed together or one at a time, making for a great summer read if you're running around and can only read in short windows, or if you want to grab this and a few other books to enjoy for a long vacation. Thank you so, so much to everyone who has sent in questions for last video's q and I'm doing part two for the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. It all goes a long way to supporting my work. To keep up with all things Chimere, follow me on social media through the links below. Support small and local businesses. Orient your ambitions by your passion. Science is cool. Challenge yourself. Do something nice for somebody today, even if that someone is you. Cheers, folks.